Thank you again for having us here. Uh, I'm Andrew Jensen. I'm the executive director of the Mahaska Community Development Group. It's the Economic Development Corporation here in Oskaloosa. Um, I'm also on the, the brand leadership team. Uh, by way of a little bit of a background, I grew up in Iowa, um, southwest Iowa, but I moved to Oskaloosa about a year and a half ago. Uh, my family and I, we moved from St. Louis with our four little kids, really wanted to get back to a small town in Iowa and, and be involved in a lot of the, the initiatives uh, that you can in, in small town and make small town Iowa better. And so this is really one of the projects that I'm really most excited about uh, being a part of right now. Um, and so uh, I guess with that, I'll let Aaron Thanks, introduce. Andrew, and I'm uh, uh, Aaron Riggs, a um, video producer in the area. I was born and raised in Oskaloosa, went away for college, decided to come back, make a career here. Uh, where I met my wife as well, and we recently bought a house, and uh, so we too are excited to start raising a family here in Oskaloosa, and uh, I'm a member of the, a volunteer of the brand leadership team. So um, what we're doing today is uh, this presentation has been given to about 20 different organizations in town, and the purpose is really just to keep the conversation going, um, answer questions, give out information, um, and just uh, listen to feedback as well to the various people that uh, this uh, branding project really affects the citizens of Oskaloosa. So today we're just going to talk about branding, what it is, and uh, the process that uh, we've been going through throughout all this. Uh, before we, we continue any further, um, there's been a lot of talk about this project, so we just want to set the record straight on one thing, and that's the bandstand is not moving. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to destroy our beautiful square. That's a, a definite thing that we don't want to do. So, um, Roger Brooks, uh, how many of you have g went to his presentation or seen his video online or familiar with it? Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, he's a tourism and branding expert, and he's helped hundreds of communities find their identity, um, develop a brand, and boost their tourism and uh, visitors. Um, and so he was hired last year by Oskaloosa Main Street to do, to do the same thing for our community. And uh, he did that with, uh, he came here with the support of a grant from the Iowa Economic Development Authority's Main Street Iowa program, as well as contributions from the city and the county, along with 45 local businesses and organizations. And so to summarize what he said, he basically pointed out that our community has a lot of potential, but we need direction. And so that's where branding really comes in. And so just a little bit about branding. Um, it's important to realize that it's more than just a logo. And you can see here our uh, new Oskaloosa logo, the abbreviated version of it. Um, it's important to realize that uh, branding isn't just about this one logo or the look of that, but rather it's about products. Um, for example, you don't, choo you don't choose to buy a Chevy over a Ford just because you like the way one logo look looks versus the other looks. No, rather you buy it for the product. You like the way the Chevy drives, you like the way the Ford handles. Same with Pepsi and Coke. You don't buy one can of soda because you like the way one lo blue logo looks versus a red logo. Rather, you buy it because <clears throat> you like the way it tastes. You like the way the Pepsi tastes versus the, the way a Coke tastes. So it's important to real realize that a brand is a perception, and it's a promise to deliver on a certain product so that when people see a logo, they can have an expectation of what I'm going to get out of that logo. And it's usually based on a product. And so uh, why is this even important? Why does Oskaloosa need a brand? I'm going to let Andrew answer that. Yeah, so I think one thing that we first need to recognize is that um, pretty much every community has some sort of, of brand or some sort of identity that's being communicated already. Whether we like it or not, we're known for something in, in Oskaloosa. And so part of, the, part of the effort here, too, is to, to capture and to drive what people understand and feel and think about Oskaloosa. But there are some big issues that uh, branding can be one of many tools to help us resolve in the community. One is to stop leakage. Leakage is when money is earned here and then it's spent elsewhere. So we earn a paycheck here in Oskaloosa, we live here, and then we go to Des Moines to do our shopping, things like that. That's leakage. And so if we can capture those do dollars and have that money spend internally in our local economy, uh, that's better for us all. Creating more jobs. We have a lot of uh, high quality employers here in Oskaloosa. We're, from the economic development perspective, we're always um, in contact with new businesses coming in. But to have that story and identity, um, a compelling reason why they should come here and see a vision for their uh, 
business here in Oskaloosa, that's one of the things that uh, the branding will help us address. Increased population. Uh, Oskaloosa has done fairly well compared to other similar communities across the state over the past several decades. We've had a pretty much stable population. However, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not particularly good. We should be growing. Basically, as a community, we're either growing or dying. And to be able to harness our identity to make an attractive place for families to come and see a future for themselves and their kids is one of the things that we're trying to capture with this branding effort. And improve the housing stock. Over and over again, what I hear, one of our big needs in the community is housing. And so this effort connects to our efforts uh, with housing and improving the image of the community, as well as creating a, um, a lively downtown area uh, we have a lot of potential for upper story housing in the downtown area that can really be utilized and, and um, this effort can help tie some of those things together. So although, um, although branding is not going to be the sole tool by any means to address these, it's a way to tie some of these things together. This can help address these issues by getting all the different parties involved on the same page, reading from the same script. This is an image by, by Roger Brooks. But it's about how do we coordinate and bring uh, the different organizations and entities as well as local businesses together to see a common vision for our future. So again, it's more than a logo. It's, uh, that logo represents a product that's behind it. And so we work really hard to understand what our product is here in Oskaloosa, um, develop a brand uh, around it, and uh, create a logo that captures the essence of that. Um, so before we actually get into the products that we really see as part of the, the brand, Aaron's going to walk us through a little bit of the process of how we actually got to where we are today. Thanks, Andrew. So a um, little brief history on how we got here. So last year, Roger Brooks was hired, and he came to the community for a week, and he, gave, he assessed the community. He drove around, took photos, took notes. And then he presented those findings of his assessment on September 19th. And he talked about ways that we could improve our image or uh, our um, uh, uh, economic development, things like that, that would have a, play a hand in, in that. Um, and then after that, there was an online survey that was released that was open for one month. And uh, about 1,500 people um, answered six different questions. And uh, out of that, the responses from that survey, then products were developed that then would exemplify our brand, Oskaloosa Simply Brilliant. Um, so uh, just by way of curiosity, how many in the room took uh, that survey that was online? Yeah, great. So um, six, there were six different questions. Uh, I pulled three here to just talk a little bit about what we learned. Um, this is a word cloud, which means that the words that were used more often in the responses are larger than the words that are, uh, are larger, and the smaller words are, were used less often. So in answering this question, what do you think are Oscar's three greatest assets? A lot of people use the, the, the words that are large on the screen. So a lot of people refer to the square, refer to the Lacey Complex, Musco, the bike trail, Penn, community. Um, those were all the words that were used most often to answer that question. And so from that, we learned that Oskaloosa has some great assets, like the Lacey Complex, Downtown District, William Penn University, the Recreation Trail. Um, but we also learned that Oskaloosa has some, some challenges as well. And we learned that from, from this question, as you can see. So we learned that uh, there's a lack of shopping, or there's not enough dining options, business turnover is, is fairly high, or that there's, it's difficult to get around, um, or the street tra traffic, uh, our roads are in need of repair, things like that. And you can see which words were used more often in, in answering that question. Uh, here's one more. So with all that input, the Brand Development Committee and Brooks developed products that would exemplify our brand the best. And it centers around enhancing our square and is best explained in this mission statement that Oskaloosa's town square is the best third place in Iowa and then the Midwest, an amazing central gathering place alive with activity, food, entertainment, and year round. And so the reason why this is the core product that we want people to think of when they hear Simply Brilliant Oskaloosa is because we believe that by enhancing our town square, we're honoring the strong legacy of music in the community, as well as the centrality of the town square as a place for social engagement. 
and we believe that this brand merges the town's legacy with a focus on beautifully lit evening activities in an effort to revitalize downtown with new retail, restaurants, and arch, arts and cultural events. Just to explain this, uh, this statement a little bit further, you may wonder what, what third place is. So uh, your first place is your home, your second place is where you work, and your third place is where you go to meet friends and family and be entertained. And we really want our town square to become that third place. And what's going to uh, make it be that is uh, by getting people to come downtown, and they come downtown to participate in activities year-round with more than 250 days of programmed activities that are happening in our town square. And we've already got a great start on this. We've got things like the Sweet Corn Serenade, Rolling Oldies. This is um, a concert that was held this past summer uh, when Tim Timmons, a Christian music uh, band, came to town. Uh, it drew a lot of people from the community, a lot of kids' activities. People enjoyed the concert sitting under the, under the shade on the lawn. Uh, and there's the, one of the praise bands of the night there. Um, other great activities we have downtown are Friday after five. That always draws a large crowd and a lot of people have fun at that. Art on the Square is another great activity. Um, always draws uh, people who are interested in art downtown. And as well, the uh, band concerts on Thursday night, always a, a major attraction. Um, a great thing to do on a, uh, on a warm summer evening. And so each of these encounters some limitation, though, due to the layout of the square. It's perfect for Thursday night band concerts, but the question I think we should ask ourselves is, is there anything we can do to adapt to the demands of our diverse and expanding community while still maintaining the historical elements of our town square and, and our town? And one possible solution would be to implement more plaza-like elements. Um, things such as these, um, there's four different photos up there, um, could enable greater versatility and interaction for events that happen on the square, as well as promote connection between the square and storefronts for shopping and dining. So that's the core product that when people hear Oskaloosa is a simply brilliant place, we want them to think of our vibrant downtown plaza that's programmed for 250 days a year, and that there's something always going on. And that has the potential to have a domino effect that can address a lot of the challenges that uh, were identified in the survey. And it, it could work something like this. So people uh, with a programmed activity, p uh, uh, pl a programmed downtown town square, people now have a reason to come downtown again. So uh, then business owners would then recognize the potential for business due to that increased foot traffic, which would then help promote their decision to establish a retail business downtown. And then their business would succeed because people that go to the activities on the square will also venture into their stores to shop. And the result is a utilized and thriving downtown, not just in the park, but also in the buildings. And that will start to address a majority of the challenges that people identified in the survey. So Aaron took us through some of the, the uh, really with, uh, the centrality of the, the historical square, but there are a lot of different other uh, different aspects to this brand that we're working on right now, um, uh, and and these are really part of the core product as well. Reimagine downtown business mix. So what are the the businesses that people want to see in the downtown area that people will visit and will shop at, will spend money while they're here. Actually, Main Street, Oskaloosa Main Street, uh, through another IEDA grant, is working on a uh, retail market analysis for the downtown area that's going to be released here fairly soon. So that's going to be a big piece of it is, is getting the right types of businesses in the downtown area that really feed into this um, lively downtown area that we're, we've been talking about. We've talked about a, possibly a downtown hotel. Um, that's a kind of a big picture. Uh, but it, again, it's uh, how do you reach the people, say, that are coming in for a tournament out at the Lacey Sports Complex? How do you get them downtown to spend money while they're here in town? Uh, working on the mall, how do we develop that into a, a central marketplace and, and reconnect that to the downtown area? Facade rehabilitation program, we're really excited about this. Main Street is working on this with the city of Oskaloosa uh, to actually utilize some federal funding to be able to address facades in the downtown area, uh, the physical... Um, uh, the structures of some of our downtown buildings are, they have some big needs. And so this is a program that's being worked on right now that can help address some of those issues. And visitor information kiosks, just providing information about where these great things are around our community 
um, potentially having one, say, out at the Lacey Complex or William Penn so that when visitors come to the community, they know what's available and how to get downtown or elsewhere in our community to, again, spend money when they're in town. Some of these are some of the uh, potential things, the very best of Oskaloosa. Actually, Roger Brooks was um, in Pella a few years ago um, for all of Marion County, and they developed this a very, I think it's best of, of Red Rock area, but many different communities have done this, where if somebody's coming in, they see what are the, the 10 things that they just have to see while they're in town. So it's things like that. We have a tourism committee. The Chamber of Commerce has recently launched a tourism committee that's going to be addressing and try to put out more information about Oskaloosa and the offerings that we have here. Here are some of the other products that we're also working on. Um, a wayfinding system, and one and two really go together. The city recently contracted with a top design firm out of Des Moines, RDG, to do a wayfinding uh, and corridor study. So the wayfinding system is signage all around town. What are the big attractions around town? How do you get from one place to another? Corridor improvements. We know that one of the biggest challenges that we have in the community is what do people see when they first arrive in town? A Avenue and Market, I know for, for many years, have been an issue just as far as what people see. So how do we address some of those issues? We're really excited about that project. We're also working on getting some uh, merchandise with the, the new logo to, to freshen up uh, what we're doing and, and so people can start to see the logo around the Chamber of Commerce with uh, the Herald has started the Yard of the Week program. Perhaps you've seen that around town. Again, it's promoting the positive image about how really some of this community pride of, of what we have good here in town. New pole banners have gone up downtown. I don't know if you've, you've probably noticed them just around the square. We'd love to see them all over town. Of course, all of this costs money. And we're still certainly working on more things. This is, uh, this is an image from Roger Brooks. This is not um, from the new design firm, but um, Perhaps our signage might look something like this. Working on merchandise, uh, we're not, not all of these are being pushed forward right at the moment, but we're working on different concepts of what t-shirts and chairs and, and different uh, merchandise might, might look like. Um, implementation is already beginning. I mentioned the Art of the Week program. We have new, more concerts downtown. Um, Businesses are taking Roger Brooks's recommendations about how to make their businesses and storefronts more attractive. I mentioned the pole banners. This is Great Expectations. I don't know if you've seen their, um, their bike rack. Uh, to, it was a connection with the Blue Zones effort. So we're excited to see like, those things going up around town. And we, d we are seeing um, a lot of interest and investment actually already taking place because of some of the stuff that we're working on. So with that, uh, I think you can tell that Aaron and I are probably both very excited about where we think uh, this is all going. Um, you know, so there are some of the things, so these are some of the things that will be the proof in the pudding um, for why Oskaloosa is a simply brilliant place. So as we move forward with implementation, these are the things that we hope uh, to be able to see. So now, um, now that we're actually done talking, but we're gonna let Roger Brooks uh, tell you a little bit from, from his perspective and see one of the videos that, uh, that we've put together uh, to try to uh, get people excited about what we're doing here. How do we make our town a destination that people will not just work in, but will live here? So what sets you apart from all the other cities and counties? What puts you on the map? Wouldn't it be cool if we could get the people that live within a 20 mile radius to spend some time and some money in Oskaloosa, that you were the destination? A brand evokes emotion. It's a feeling we have. That will turn around your mall, it will turn around your retail, it will give you a better sense of community, and that's what this is about. You have the most people weigh in per capita of any city we have ever worked in. The point was, there wasn't a whole lot of people that said they hang out in Oskaloosa. That's what we gotta fix.
It's always been said around the country that Iowa has the most educated youth in the country and that your biggest export is your educated youth. If you want people in their 20s, their 30s, their early 40s, young families, you better provide places for them to go after work and on the weekends. Wouldn't it be cool if people said, I'm going to Oslo's? Or, well, honey, instead of going home, let's just go downtown tonight. That's what this is about. What can we do to get people to spend more time, more of their money in Oskaloosa? That is our number one goal. It's about you. Forget all the reasons why something may not work. You only find one good reason why it will. What you have here is one of the most beautiful downtowns in the country. You have the architecture of the courthouse. You have a lot of beautiful architecture on your buildings. You've got a square now that could be a central gathering place. But here's the bottom line. No matter how beautiful you make downtown Oskaloosa, are you going to go there if there's nothing happening on the stage? That's what this does. It provides you with a reason for your locals and those that live around you to spend more time in Oskaloosa, having fun with their kids and their families and their grandparents. It's going to make you the best place for the entire Midwest. And it is really cool. So we're really excited about this and we hope uh, you are too because we think with a little enthusiasm and excitement about doing this, we really have a lot that we can accomplish together as a community and really make Oskaloosa simply brilliant. So. I guess with that, we'd uh, gladly take any questions that you'd have. We like questions. So. <laughs> what happens next? What happens next? Well, um, we have, uh, the brand leadership team has released the brand action plan. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please visit uh, brilliantoskaloosa.org. Um, and uh, the brand action plan is on there. So there's, I think there's 50 different recommendations that we're pursuing. So I think the biggest thing uh, as far as like tangible implementation is probably the wayfinding and corridor improvements that we're working on now. Um, the market analysis will give us a tool to really be able to recruit businesses for that downtown business mix. And I think one thing that we don't talk a lot about, but if, uh, if people or organizations have something that they want to put on at, on the square to have that just uh, more, more vibrant, more activity in the square, we can start working on that now. Now, we, we think that we need to make improvements to, um, to the square to be able to make that happen a lot easier without as much labor. But if there are events that people want to do, we'd love to, to see those things happen. What are some of the plans for the corridor improvements? <laughs> so uh, the latest, it has, we've just had the first public meeting. So that was, was that last week? Karen, the, yeah, just last week we had the first public meeting. So that was the, um, the consultant was in town and, and really just collecting information about what the issues that people saw um, along the corridor. So uh, things that have I know that have been brought up was um, you know um, monument entryway <coughs> signs, um, improving the lighting. Uh, right now it's just pretty pretty generic lighting down the street. Um, it's really looking from the curb to the property line. So it's really the not the street itself, but it's the what um, essentially the city of Oskaloosa can control um, along the corridor. So there'll certainly be more coming coming about from that. Nothing tangible yet. Like the old community stadium is still two blocks from downtown. Is that something that would be incorporated? I mean, you guys initially were talking like through the Roger Brooks, like a skate park or, you know, like an ice rink. Is that something that during winter time it could be used and still funnel people back and forth, whether there's some sort of transportation that brings them back to go so <coughs> they can come back in for entertainment and dinner in the downtown? It hasn't been talked about, but it's definitely a good idea and something to consider. I think the, the concept behind an ice skating rink in the downtown town square area is really to give people a reason to come downtown even during the winter. So um, obviously it's, no one wants to sit outside and watch a concert in the winter. So that leaves a whole slew of days, many, many days that are left unprogrammed. Well, how do you program that then? One idea is to install a 
or have a temporary ice skating rink set up. So then people would have a reason to come downtown during winter and skate around on that and then go off to a shop that's nearby, Smoky Row, for example, for a hot cup of cocoa. So that's sort of the concept behind that. But um, yeah, all ideas are on the table still. And I would I'd just add, yeah, um, there are no, nobody is working on any type of a site plan for this square for like an ice skating rink right now, but it is about how do you address the winter months and getting activity in the downtown area. I agree with you and Aaron, like the community stadium, I mean, that's an, that's an asset of the community and I think kind of big picture, how can we best utilize that, make best use of it, I think that's a good question. about within the chamber and you guys will be hearing more about and we're going to be looking for your input on is the fact that the Thursday night when the bands play you know there's a gap between the time you get off work and when the band starts playing mm -hmm. um, you know for those of us who live out of town to go home and then come back doesn't happen and so you know we're looking for ideas and we're teaming up with Pella you know Pella does the Thursday nights where they have activities every Thursday night there's a different theme every Thursday night so that there's something that families know they can go up and they can eat supper there's something for the kids always even though it's a different theme and then there's different groups that own each night so you don't have a team of people that's exhausted by doing every single Thursday night so we'll be coming to the bank to say hey let's own a night of this if this comes to fruition but so I guess I would just encourage people to be thinking about fun things that can happen on a Thursday night while you're waiting for that band to play things for kids to do do supper and capitalize on that to keep people in town I think that's a perfect example of what yeah. we like to see yeah, it's a great idea especially because you know people are work downtown they're downtown already yeah um, that's money that you know could be spent in the area but we need there needs to be something for them to spend that money on Exactly. And if it happens right as soon as they get off work, then that would be the ideal time, definitely. Yeah. 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 So. What other types of programming things are you looking at for the square? I mean, is it all like big concert type things, or is it also kind of some smaller stuff? Or <clears throat> There's a, apparently a book, I guess that's this mm -hmm. thick, that is filled with like various clubs and organizations. And so one of the ideas that Roger had proposed to us was that what we could do is go through that book and just start making phone calls. Hey, would you like to have a show and tell for your club or organization, a national thing maybe, or maybe it's local, I don't know, uh, to come and host, have an event on our square uh, for some night or some day or some weekend. Um, and he had success, uh, there was a community out on the West Coast that had a lot of success with that, so much so that um, that organization made that town um, it's sort of just national go-to spot every year, so much so to the point where it became a yearly thing. And what it does is it draws a lot of people in, and what, what do they do? They spend their money in that community. So that's sort of a starting point that uh, would definitely be pursued as the process continues um, to start there. But otherwise, it's you know, really kind of up to anyone's imagination as far as what could happen on the square. So any and all ideas are still on the table. Great. Anything else? Well, we really appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to talk to all of you. Um, Karen and I both have offices over in the Chamber Building. Certainly stop by or give us a call if you just have questions or comments about this. And, um, and of course, if you want to talk to, to Aaron, we can get you in touch with Aaron, too. Oh, there you go. We put up Karen's information, so you can harass her. So. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's right. Yeah, and uh, if you do go onto our website, uh, it's not up here, but uh, uh, brilliantoskalusa.org, there are um, some submission forms on there. If you have a question that we didn't answer today, you can certainly submit it through the website. Um, you can contact Karen through the website, or you can also sign up to volunteer or have your name added to a volunteer list through the website. So. Uh, do check that out if uh, you're interested. And also, I'll tag on to the website. We have a frequently asked questions section. And if you have a question that you didn't want to ask today or whatever, just throw it up there, and we will we'll send you a response and get a, get a response up so everybody can see it on our website as well. So we'll be happy to do that. All right. I think that's all we have. All right.